Chapter 32. Peter. So you like them? I asked Brooke as we sat on Charles's front steps. I found a riding lawn mower in the barn and mowed the yard for him. I had never mowed a lawn before in my life, but it was fairly intuitive. I had already picked up the yard and piddled around all I could outside. I had to do something for him. He had done so much for me. I do, she said, smiling up at me. I like them, and I trust them. Millie does too. What about the sun? I asked, trying not to sound jealous that she was sleeping under the same roof with a boy that was not me. After that night we had spent together, I wanted to sleep every single night with her in my arms. I missed her as if we had been doing it for years. She shrugged. He's okay. Kind of moody and withdrawn. I thought he was only that way at school because he's new. He might be that way because this situation is new, I pointed out. Besides, don't you like guys that are moody and withdrawn? She smiled and elbowed me. I do, but he isn't hairy enough for me. I like my men rugged and wild. I chuckled as she played with the hair on my chin. So you're good. You think this is a good thing? I do, she said, and I believed her. I think everything is going to be okay. Good. And they let you come see me? I asked, hopeful that she could come whenever she wanted to. They don't actually know I'm seeing you, she admitted with a guilty smile. They let me come over here to get the last of our things. I raised an eyebrow. They didn't want to come help? They did, she said. They really wanted me to at least bring Michael, but I insisted that I needed this time alone to grieve, and they gave me my space. I nodded. I'm going to get us cell phones as soon as I can so we can stay in touch. They'll have to teach me how to text, I said, air quotes and all. She laughed and leaned into me. I will. I have a present for you, I said, reaching into my front left pocket. I pulled out her grand's ring and held it in the palm of my hand. She gasped, grabbing the ring back from me. Peter, what did you do? From the look on her face, I knew I did the right thing. I bought it back, I said. I'm sorry it took me a few days, but I had to make more money to cover the difference between what he gave you and what he was selling it for. Peter, that money was for you, she argued. I did that so you would be safe, so you would have money this winter. I smiled. I'll figure something out. Don't worry about me. You don't have to pay me back for that, Brooke. It wasn't your fault. Her eyes welled up with tears. Okay, then I'll confront Jeff and get your money back. We don't even know if it was him, I said. If he was at school all day, he wouldn't have even had time. And I don't want you to. It's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to make sure that you and Millie are safe. That's it. It doesn't extend to me. But I love you, she argued. I want to take care of you. I love you too, I said, pulling her closer to kiss her on top of her head. But I know how to survive, Brooke. I'm going to be okay. No matter what, everything is going to be okay. If I turn into a wolf this winter, then I'll see you in the spring, and I'll kiss you enough to make up for every cold day we lost. I love this ring, she admitted, but I would give it up again to make sure you get to stay with me. We both stood as we heard gravel crunching. A sleek, clean car crawled down the driveway, as if it were afraid of the rocks damaging it. Do you think that's the bank coming for the house? She asked, never taking her eyes off the car. I don't know, I said. I don't know how this works. What will you do? She asked. Where will you go? Will you be able to move the camper when you leave? I don't know, I admitted. Hello, Brooke, an older man said as he exited the car with a folder in hand. Mr. Bernard, she said, surprised. What are you doing here? Please, we aren't in science class. You can call me Nicholas, he said, walking up to us with a slight limp. Nicholas Bernard, he said, stretching out his hand for me to shake it. I'm Brooks' teacher at Midnight Springs Academy and the executor of Mr. Charles Atkins' will. And you are? Peter Crane, I said, pumping his hand back. His cheery demeanor changed. Are you kidding me? I shifted a little, wondering if my secret was already exposed. No, sir. I go by Peter Crane. He laughed and looked down at the ground. Well, I'll be darned. I expected this to be a bit more complicated. What's going on, Mr. Bernard? Brooke asked. Is Peter in trouble? Quite the opposite, he said, opening the folder. The will states, you will find a male on my property who goes by the name of Peter. You may not find him right away, but he will be there. Until you find him, nothing is to be done with my possessions. They are to sit stagnant and to be untouched by the government or anyone else. He glanced up at me like he was anticipating my response. Well, you found me, I said. Now what? He closed the folder and passed it to me. Now it all belongs to you. 
The folder felt heavy in my hands. I'm sorry. What? Mr. Atkins' wife had already passed, and they had no children. Everything that belonged to him now belongs to you. I stepped backward and felt the ground beneath me. The ground I now owned. This land is mine? I asked, unable to believe it. And the house and the other assets. It's all in the folder, he explained. Let's go inside and talk it over. I need to sit, and I would love a glass of water if that's okay. I stood frozen as I held my very last care package. Of course, I'll get you some, Brooke said, leading him inside. I could make some tea. I would love some, he said, but don't think you get extra credit for it. They both laughed, and she looked back at me. Her bewilderment was clear in her wide brown eyes. It looks so nice in here. Did you two do this? He asked as he walked through the doorway. It was all me, Brooke said proudly. Well, me and my sister. We started cleaning for Mr. Atkins recently. I'm thinking about starting up a side gig cleaning people's houses on the weekends. Well, it's a good thing. This place was a pigsty the last time I came over. You definitely know what you're doing, he said. He continued on, but they were too far in the house for me to hear. My house. I had a house, land, and access to the river for my job. Brooke had a safe place for her sister with a roof, food, and responsible adults. We were going to be okay. Brooke and I would make it through whatever life threw at us. There was an old saying about how it is better to teach a man to fish than to give him one, because then he could feed himself for a lifetime instead of only a day. Mr. Atkins did both for us. He gave us what we needed, and then empowered us by teaching us to take care of ourselves after he was gone. As I stood there with the folder in my hands, I wondered if my mother's wish for a guardian angel for me was actually fulfilled by the wolf or by Mr. Atkins.